Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be going over 10 of my favorite biology labs that you can do for super cheap with your students or at home with minimal materials. If you're a science teacher looking for life science labs to do on a budget, this video is for you. Maybe you have limited options at your school, maybe you're purchasing lab materials out of pocket, or maybe you just have hundreds of students that you need to get lab materials for and you really can't buy big expensive lab kits. A lot of these labs have data collection and inquiry based elements to them too, so hopefully they'll align with some of your goals for you and your students. Let's get started. One of my favorite labs to do towards the start of the year in biology is to practice observation and inference skills using live earthworms. Of course, you need to get permission from your school to do a lab with living organisms, but usually if it's an invertebrate, you do have a little bit more wiggle room to perform a lab. Worms can be found for super cheap at any store that might sell tackle or fishing bait. I usually go to the hunting and fishing section at Walmart, and there's usually a fridge in the back with night crawlers for less than $3. I'll get enough so that every table in each of my periods has a worm to manipulate and observe in this lab and then the students make observations and inferences on the worm's behavior and follow a guided set of questions as they practice their observation skills. They can see how the worm responds to different things like obstacles or water and it's a super fun way to get students interested about science at the start of the year. Next up if you just want to get students practicing different scientific procedures you can do a really simple surface tension lab with milk and food coloring. I have a whole video on that which I'll link in the description below if you're interested in seeing this demo. This is more of a demo than an inquiry experiment, but you can add different inquiry based elements to it if you just give the students materials and ask them to figure out what's happening or to develop the steps on their own to get the food coloring in the milk to display a cool tie dye shape. Number three, one of my favorite labs to do all year long can be done with super cheap materials. All you need is some chicken livers and hydrogen peroxide and of course some either measuring cups or beakers. In this lab, students are investigating the properties of enzymes, especially the idea that enzymes enzymes are unchanged and reusable after a reaction, specifically the enzyme catalase within liver. This lab is easy to perform as a demo or you can have lab stations set up for each of your classes and chicken livers usually run for pretty cheap at a grocery store. Just go to the poultry section and find enough chicken livers for the number of groups that you have in your class and hydrogen peroxide bottles usually run anywhere from a dollar to two dollars at your grocery store as well. Number four, if you're getting students used to just scientific measuring tools and getting them started with properties of water, you can do a very simple water lab looking at things like cohesion, adhesion, surface tension in a lab using just beakers, graduated cylinders, water, soap, cups, and paper clips. Next up, number five. If you are working with an AP biology class and you want to do an investigation using chi-square analysis, all you need is a bunch of M&Ms and some calculators. In this lab, students look at the amounts of colors they expect to find within a bag of M&Ms based on what the Mars company says, and then they count and calculate the number they actually observe within their M&M sample. Then they do a chi-square analysis to see if they can accept or reject the proposed quantities of each color of M&Ms that they should have found in the bags. Number five, another fun AP biology lab you can do with very few materials at all is create a choice chamber and design an inquiry experiment with things like roly polies or pill bugs. I have another video on this particular lab so I'll link it in the description below. But if you have access to a woodsy area and it is a warmer time of year, you can go out and find pill bugs on your own without having to purchase any materials at all and this lab is super easy to set up. The students can choose what elements they want to change within each side of the choice chamber and then observe the movement of the pill bugs over time. Next up, a super simple lab if you're just practicing the scientific method is a radish seed germination lab. Radish seeds are super easy to germinate and all you need is a container, a wet piece of paper towel, and different conditions to put the radish seeds in. Radish seeds germinate very quickly and so you can collect data within several days on an experiment like this. Next up, if you're testing for the presence of different organic compounds in foods or beverages, you can test for lipids using just brown paper bags and a dropper. This is a super easy way to introduce organic compounds and indicator tests. And if lipids are present, you should see the paper turn translucent after it dries. Next up, if you don't have access to a lot of microscopes within your classroom, you can do a cool investigation with types of microscopes and different types of microscopic images by providing students with a page of images and having them hypothesize what the image is, 
what type of microscope the image was taken with, and even potentially the magnification. This is a really fun way to introduce different types of microscopes and different laboratory equipment, even if you don't have it in your classroom. My last one that I'll leave you with today is a fermentation investigation. If you have different bottles or containers, a little bit of yeast, and different sugars or juices, the last thing you'll need is a balloon to put over the top of the containers, and you can observe the buildup of carbon dioxide gas in each of the fermentation setups. This lab is great for investigating cellular energy processes, or again, just the scientific method. Or you can have students set up the fermentation chambers in different conditions to see if there's any effect on the rate of fermentation in this experiment. I have a whole bunch of other labs that I'll share in another video, so be sure to stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss out on other great budget biology investigations. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.